a question from Ahmed who is curious about whether he should do the master's division, 30 and up, or if he should stick to the adult division, 18 to 29 typically is what they consider that. And he's curious because when he was a white belt, he had a couple of competitions. He got promoted about four months ago to blue belt, and so he's been itching to compete again. Picked out a competition, it's a pretty big one. He's getting ready to sign up, and he was telling his coach, and his coach said, hey, you should sign up for master's. Now, Ahmed sort of, and I can read through his message, he kind of took this as a slight, as if his coach doesn't believe in him, because his wording is that the adult division is the toughest division. It's the tougher of the, the two divisions. Does his coach not believe in him? His coach doesn't think he's tough enough to do the adult division. He says he doesn't mind the challenge, but he's just curious about maybe what he should do or what my sort of idea would be, whether masters or adult, and maybe what would be some of the, I guess, pros and cons to doing it. Uh, either way, one way or the other. So, brother, thank you for the question. And as far as the masters and adult division, before I get into the video, if you're newer to jiu-jitsu and you don't know how this works, the adult divisions typically start 18, they go up to 29. You have kids and teens before that. From there, you have Masters 1, which is typically 30, 35, and then 36 to 40 or whatever is 41 is Masters 2, and then they continue so on. Now, you can always go down an age. So if you're like Master 1, Master 2, you can always compete as an adult, but you cannot go up an age. And the reason you know that they do this is because you're giving everybody a chance to compete and try things out. So again, most of the time, competitive sports are not available for a 40-year-old person, right? Usually your athletic career ends very early in life, so you don't get to do that. But for a lot of people that get into jiu-jitsu a little bit older, they get a chance to like test themselves and have fun. It's a lot of fun to compete even older. I mean, you see even a lot of older boxers now wanting to get in and go back to boxing like Mike Tyson and stuff like that, whether it's for money or if it's because they miss being in the ring, I don't know. But again, it's one of these things where you get a chance to do it. And for a lot of us that enjoy that competitive drive, it's fun to be able to do it as we get older. Now, that said, there are some advantages that I think about, just off the top of my head, that the younger divisions have, the younger people have, over older people, right, in, say, the master's divisions, and they're things to keep in mind. So, one is the recovery time. So, this is the thing where, when you're training, when you're younger, you have better recovery. It's just, it's because you're younger. Your body's in better shape. It's just the way it is. I remember when I was 18, 19, I used to train with some of the older guys at our gym. You know, they'd be, you know, 30, 35, nothing crazy. And we would be training, getting after, going hard, everything else. And then, you know, the next day I would come back to the gym. All right, let's do it. You know, and then they would say, hey, I need a day off. I'm tired. Or they would have to train at a lighter pace. Even after some of these hard training sessions, you know, a couple hours later, I was going to go, you know, for a run or something and get go with some weights or something while they're like, I got to take the rest of the day off. And I remember them telling me, you know, when you get older, Chewy, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel it just like we feel it. You're going to feel your body. You're going to, you know, have these same sorts of feelings that we're talking about once you get into your late 20s and 30s. You know, and for me, I'm young, stupid. And I'm like, Psh, whatever, man. Like, I'm going to stretch. I'm going to eat good. I'm going to be fine. I'm never going to have those problems. And then I got into my late 20s, early 30s, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm tired. I need a day off. <laughs> and um, this, is, this is tough because I own a gym and I have to be very mindful about the way I train because I can't train at that same level of intensity all the time that I did when I was in my um, early 20s, things like that. And so again, when you start to get into your 30s, you're not going to be able to train with the same amount of volume that you did when you were younger, most likely. You know, you might be close to it, but not, maybe not as much. And you're not going to be able to recover as fast. And this also plays a role when you're competing because, let's say you had a hard match. If you're not able to recover, recover as fast, it's going to play a role into the next match that you're going into. I know that, you know, for instance, there's been tournaments where, for instance, I, I rolled at one tournament where I beat this young 20, like 23 or 24 year old black belt. I was in my early 30s, like 32 at the time. And I get done and I, I won like $1,000, which is super cool. And then we had this full 10 minute match, right? So all these things are good. And then I walk off the mat and someone hands me this big giant acai bowl. They're like, here, man, congratulations to being the winner. And I'm like, my hands are so curled over, I can barely hold the stupid thing. And then, like, I'm trying to eat this thing with a claw of a hand, and I'm looking over at him, and he's just relaxed. Meanwhile, I'm still sweating. I can't, like, relax. My body's shot, and he he's like, whatever, man. I'm going to go for a jog or something. You know, he just, he looked fine. And, um... I remember at the ADCC trials a couple of years ago, I competed, and I had a really tough match, second round of the uh, the bracket, and I went against this young, young, tough black belt. We went to overtime. I beat him just by the skin of my teeth. I got the nod from the refs, and they gave me the, uh, the hand raise. I walked off the mat. My lungs were burning. Hands are curled over, exhausted. Now, if it would have been a normal like jiu-jitsu style tournament where you immediately compete like 10 minutes later, I would have been done. I would have, I would have got 
murder the next round. Luckily, I had 45 minutes in between because that's the way they did it that day. It was, much, it was more like wrestling where you had these long periods of breaks, and I really like that. If there were more jiu-jitsu tournaments like that, I would probably do more adult divisions if I had like an hour or 45 minutes to rest in between where it wasn't immediate, like, get, get back on the mat, you're, you're going immediately. I would be more okay with doing, you know, adult divisions because I'd have more time to recover. But as it is now, that's not the case. And so again, that helped me out in that situation. I was able to go on and ended up taking third at that. So recovery is a big thing that younger people are going to have over you, Ahmed, if you compete at an adult division instead of masters. The other thing is that the single-minded focus, so along with the volume and training, along with the recovery and all the stuff that they've got, the single-minded focus that a younger person can have for jiu-jitsu that is typically more difficult for an older person. Not always that difficult, depends on the situation, but most of the time it is. So as you get older, as you probably know, you get more and more responsibilities tacked onto you, right? You might have a family, you might have you know, a wife, kids, you might have all kinds of stuff going on, career, things that were not present when you're in your early 20s. When you get in your early 20s, it's kind of whatever you want to do. I know that for me, when I got into jiu-jitsu at 18, 19 years old, I didn't have really any responsibilities. I had I lived at mom's house. I worked a little bit, worked enough to cover tournaments and jiu-jitsu training. And then I went to school sometimes. And then I trained. I ate, trained, slept jiu-jitsu. It's all I did all the time. Training as much as I could, lifting weights, running, cardio, doing as many jiu-jitsu sessions as I could get in. That's all I wanted to do. And I got better a lot faster than a lot of the people around me. I competed a lot. And I could do all that stuff because I was just focused on that one thing. Now, as I've gotten older, it's a different situation. And again, I'm a guy who owns a gym. Like, this is what I do. But even me, I still have tough situations sometimes where when I want to really train for a competition, I've got to kind of shirk some of the responsibilities that I have running the businesses because if I don't, I won't be able to train like I need to train and focus. And so one of the things that... Again, you'll gain from you know being around in a master's division is you'll probably be around like, uh, you know, I don't want to say like-minded, but people in similar situations where you guys have kids, you have careers, you have these things going on, whereas these guys in the adult divisions probably don't have this going on. Now, one thing to sort of share with you is that this is probably going to be more of a thing to me, it becomes more and more prominent or exaggerated as you get into purple belt, brown belt, and black belt. White and blue belt, maybe not as much. To some degree, you might have a few of them. But when you start getting into purple belt and brown belt and black belt, you really start to get into guys who are really good, very strong, very technical. And you start to run into a lot of people who are like taking this as their job, their career. And when you run into those people... They're tough. It's like, I mean, like you, if you run into a really like competitive black belt who eats and sleeps this stuff, or I mean, competitive uh, purple belt who eat, breathes, and sleeps this stuff, they're going to feel like rolling with a black belt at your average gym, you know, maybe even better because they're just so dialed in because that's all they're doing. And so, again, it's one of those things just to keep in mind where, again, the, the master's division is just a place to compete against people that are the same age as group as you and things like that. It may not play a big role into your competition coming up because, again, I saw pictures of you on Instagram. You're in good shape. But again, if you start to notice that you're going to these competitions and you're having trouble keeping up with some of the younger guys as you get older, it may be something to just jump into the Masters division and just run with it and enjoy it. One thing that I do like about the Masters division as well is that the matches are shorter. I don't like long matches because typically for me, I have <laughs> I have a problem. Like I like just like pressing the go button and just going like and getting after it. I don't necessarily like playing the game and starting slow. I like to really get after it. And a lot of times when it was like 10 minute matches at the adult division, I always like, I could do a couple of those, like just straight on and just keep that pace. But again, if you're doing 10 minute matches and let's say if you don't finish it, it's a tough thing to like again bounce back from and then compete again just a few minutes later. And so again, I like the shorter matches personally. That's just my own personal uh, preference to Masters of Divisions opposed to, say, the long 10-minute long plus of adult divisions. So, anyway, hopefully that's useful to you, Ahmed. Hopefully it gives you something to think about for your competition coming up and anyone else that has a, sort of the same question about Masters or adult divisions. And, uh, guys, I'll talk to you next time.